Hi my love, so I'm coming to you fresh out of the shower with no foundation and any product on my skin other than my brows and the reason for that is because I want to do a foundation first impression or foundation and concealer first impression and this is going to be on a new L'Oreal foundation which you may have heard of it, it's their Infallible Fresh Wear Foundation and their Full Wear Concealer. So this is supposed to be a dupe for the Tarte Shape Tape or just one of those more full coverage concealers that's on the market. So it's going to be a drugstore alternative to that. And then this one, from what I'm gathering, is going to be somewhere in between their Pro Glow and their Pro Matte Foundation. So more of a natural finish, more of a medium coverage, and just something that's probably going to be a little bit more skin-like on your face. And so I'm going to be trying both of these today. For the foundation, I have it in the shade 425 Linen. And for the concealers, I have it in the shade... 355 vanilla which is this one right here and 360 cashmere so just two different tones of concealer they're both yellow based but one is slightly lighter and one is more of like my skin tone so I have both of those today and for the concealer amount that you get it's 0.33 fluid ounces or 10 milliliters and then for the foundation you get your standard one fluid ounce now these retail for about the same price I believe the foundation is around 11 or 12 dollars and the concealer Concealer is around ten or eleven dollars, so they're kind of pricey. I mean, the foundation isn't too bad. Ten or eleven dollars, or. 11 or 12 dollars rather is not too bad. I think even for drugstore foundations nowadays. But concealer wise, eleven or so dollars for a concealer when in retrospect isn't so bad but when you put it in like reference to the foundation considering that the foundation is only a dollar more it kind of is a little bit pricey so I'm a little bit concerned I hope that this works a lot better than I'm expecting because it is kind of pricey when you put it compared to the foundation but we'll see I kind of want to test them out today doing different things I might do one of the colors it's like an eyeshadow base and then one as my concealer and then I'll do the foundation all over obviously so we're gonna test these out today um so the foundation comes with a pump it's kind of a weird pump to be honest it's not like any other packaging that I've ever seen um but it actually is really nice and sleek and the foundation bottle is really nice in your hand it's a glass bottle and it just feels very luxurious which I like especially for a drugstore foundation I like when drugstore foundations and products really try to up their packaging just for the sake of the fact that drugstore prices are increasing by the hour it seems and the fact that they're increasing so much so that they're almost not even drugstore pricing anymore I really expect a lot more out of them nowadays especially when it comes to packaging um so I'm going to take this I did swatch it just to see if the color was correct so that's why you see it's used but it is going to be a first impression on my face so I'm going to take my Real Technique sponge but before I do that obviously I got to pump out a bit onto my hand so I'm going to pump out one full pump so you can see how much that comes out to so that is a full pump and you can see it's runny it's not the wateriest foundation that I've ever tried I would say it's more of like a medium consistency it's kind of in the middle it's not super thick it's not super watery like a Mac face and body but it definitely has some thickness and creaminess to it so we're gonna test that out today and the way that I basically apply this is I sort of flatten out the product so it doesn't all get soaked up into one area of my sponge and then I go in with my sponge, I use the flat end. And I did not prime my skin or anything, I just applied moisturizer. The reason for that is because I wanna see how this applies without anything underneath at first. Since I typically do go without primer most days, only um, days that I have like really dry skin do I go in with like a hydrating primer. But I'm trying this out by itself. I also would typically add like a drop of oil to this but again i want to see how it applies by itself oh wow and so far it is covering pretty nicely i would say that this is a full medium coverage i would not say that it's a full coverage but it definitely is a high medium coverage so far off the first layer because you do see slight spots and things through you probably won't be able to tell in camera because they are very minimal but there is a tiny bit coming through. 
So I left the foundation just on one side of my face so that you can see the difference between this side. Now it kind of looks like it's coming off a little bit light in camera. It definitely is like maybe a quarter of a shade too light in the sense that it matches the light areas of my face but since I have a lot of redness and slight like discoloration and darkness especially like here it does show up lighter on top of those areas but the thing is when I do try to match like a darker base like when I match it to these areas it ends up looking a lot more orange and just too yellow and too dark on my skin when I go out in daylight so if it looks light here but it matches the lighter areas of my face I'm fine with that because it'll end up looking fine when I go out into daylight so it looks really nice right now and the finish of it is really nice and natural like I'm super surprised I did not really love the pro glow or the pro matte foundation by L'Oreal those were kind of on opposite ends of the spectrum for me. The Pro Matte was way too thick, way too drying, never looked really good on my skin. Even mixed with other foundations, it just made them too matte and too drying. And the Pro Glow was just almost too watery and too dewy. It just did not look that nice on top of my skin by itself. It's okay mixed with other foundations, but it's still not my favorite. This kind of is what I was hoping that I think either the Pro Glow or the Pro Matte would have been, just in the sense that it does have a more matte finish, but it definitely still has some type of like sheen, so it doesn't look flat like the Pro Matte, but then as well, it looks very healthy on the skin like I was expecting the Pro Glow to be. So this is kind of what I would consider the baby of the Pro Matte and the Pro Glow. So I'm just gonna go in with a bit more onto this side of my face and just complete the layer. And I think, honestly, one layer is enough. Like, you can see, there's really not much peeking through. There's a slight bit of redness and things here, but nothing that concealer won't cover. So I personally would say, like, one layer of this foundation, and you get a solid medium coverage. Two pumps seem to be a good amount for my entire face. I would say if you're using a beauty blender or a sponge, that two pumps is probably what it will take to cover your entire face in one even layer and get a decent medium coverage. You can always sheer it out by using less products or build it up by using more, um, but I definitely think that it looks really nice with just the one solid layer. Um, again, I don't know how it's gonna look like if you use like a brush or something. I don't typically use brushes, so I can't really tell that. I didn't wanna use a brush just to show you guys because I'm not really a fan of the way brushes apply. So if I was to use a brush, it would just kind of be it would set it up for failure basically because I already know that I don't really like brushes so if I go in with a new foundation that I don't really know how it applies and I use a brush I may just automatically not like it just for the sake of the brush and not for the sake of the product so I didn't use a brush today but I definitely think that this is a product that would also work well with a brush if you are a fan of brushes so I'm gonna go ahead and use the concealers now now I did try swatching these now one of them is a lot deeper than the other and I will swatch them on the back of my hand slightly so you can see um, but just one seems to have a little bit of um, a deeper yellow base um, oh my goodness these are a little bit difficult to get out of the tube um, but this one is the darker one it's cashmere yeah cashmere number 360 and then I'll show you what 355 vanilla looks like here are the swatches of the two colors you can see that the colors are slightly different from one another one is slightly lighter and has a brighter yellow base so this one vanilla the lighter shade 355 this one has the brighter like banana yellow and then this one has more of like a peachy golden base and this one is cashmere number 360 and they both I think would work for somebody around my skin tone I think it would just depend on what you kind of want to get like what look you're going for this one will definitely highlight more and then the deeper one will definitely be more of like a skin tone match so I'm gonna do one on one eye and one on the other just to see how they look as an under eye concealer because I think that this is more of what people will use it for is an under eye concealer um, I'm sure you can use it to spot conceal I don't typically do that um, my spot concealing is to just highlight through the center of my face um, so I'm gonna do one underneath one eye and one underneath the other just so we can see the color difference and then afterwards I'll just add a bit of each color to the other side to mix it up so that they match and they're not two separate colors so I'm gonna apply it first now and I'll go in with the lighter shade over here 
and I don't bring my foundation up underneath my eyes. So you can see I do have some discoloration and darkness underneath my eyes. So it is a doe foot applicator and it's similar to the Makeup Revolution one. I'm just going to apply a bit underneath my eye. Do a tiny bit here, tiny bit here. Since that's typically where I apply concealer. And then I will go in with my sponge and start to blend it out. Now on my hand, it does feel very matte and like creamy and kind of thick. Like it really does remind me a lot of Tarte Shape Tape. But I think it's also, ooh, I just got a whiff of like paint. Like that was, I can't tell. Hold on, let me see. Okay, this has some kind of like intense paint smell. Oh, oh, I would not recommend putting this around your nose because that was really, really intense. I was not expecting that. The coverage and the color looks nice and the way it's blending out seems to blend out pretty nicely. It's not getting patchy or weird or separating. And I'm just going to take some of this over my eyelids as well because I use this to prime for eyeshadows. And just kind of go like You this. can definitely tell that the vanilla shade did highlight my skin really well. And now I'm going to go in and just blend out this cashmere shade. And it definitely is blending out a lot lighter than I was expecting. It does blend slightly lighter. Like if you look here and then you look up here, it definitely is lighter like on the blended out part versus where you just apply the concealer straight. And I did apply some around my nose even though it does have a kind of intense paint smell in my opinion um but i wanted to keep it even since i applied it to the other side of my nose but it does look nice and if you can get past that kind of plasticky paint smell it definitely does provide good coverage as you can see the colors are not that much difference in tone or brightness the vanilla one is slightly more highlighted but i don't think it's anything that is really notable it definitely has just a tiny bit more of a like brighter effect the cashmere is slightly more natural but both would work really well if you're around my skin tone now i love the finish and the coverage of it and i'm gonna get slightly closer so that you guys can hopefully see how it looks the concealer is so smooth even though it is a full coverage it's not settling too heavily into my creases you can see there is a bit of creasing there but that always happens before I set my concealer but as far as just like the look of like crepiness it's not giving me that I typically find that concealers don't work for me if I see a lot of lines down here on the outer edge of my eye just because I have the deepest creases right here in the center um, towards the inner portion of my eye. So when I get creases that are out here, that's when I know that the concealer is going to move too much for me and it's not going to really work. But this one looks really, really nice on the skin. It looks really smooth. It's covered what I want it. And I really like the way that it looks. Also, the foundation is looking very smooth over my texture. And don't mind my foundation lips. I know they look super dry and crackly, but they always look like that when I have foundation over them. But it looks super smooth on my cheeks, which I do get a lot of texture here. So it's really, really nice that it's not emphasizing that. It makes my skin look very smooth and natural. And honestly, I would say... If you're kind of a dry skin like me and you don't love powder, you can get away with not powdering this. It will give you the most natural effect. It's not too dewy. It's not too matte. It's kind of right in the middle and I really, really am happy with it. I am going to powder it and show you guys what it looks like powdered because I always powder my foundations. Um, but if you are somebody who's more dry and you just don't like to wear powders, I would say you can get away with it. So I'm going to go ahead and set underneath my eyes. I'm just going to use my mix of translucent powders and I will lightly set around my face and I'll be right back to show you guys what that looks like up close once you have it all set down into place. 
I went ahead and applied the rest of my makeup off camera just so that you guys could see what the foundation and concealer looks like with a full face of makeup. I figured that's going to be the best representation on how this is going to look for you if you're going to wear this because obviously most people will wear this with other makeup products in conjunction. So you're not just going to apply concealer and powder or concealer and foundation and just leave it at that. You're most likely going to use a couple other products whether it be full on eyeshadow and then full on contour or if you're just going to do you know a little bit of blush or powder here and there I wanted you guys to see what it looks like with the whole nine yards of makeup so that you guys can see how everything applied on top and then also I wanted to do the shadow on top since I did apply some concealer there just to use as an eyeshadow base today which honestly it came out really nice I do like the way that my eyes look today so I want to give you guys my last final thoughts on this and honestly I will say that this rarely happens to me but I would rate both of these products at a 10 out of 10 on the rating scale being absolute whole Holy Grail products and honestly newfound loves for me in my makeup collection. Now I did not expect that these would be those types of products for me. I thought that I would like them because of the claims that they had but I didn't think that they were going to be a new love in my collection but honestly they really blew it out of the park? Blew it out of the waters? I don't even know the phrase but it really you know like was an A plus product for me. I do really like the way that it looks. The packaging is really, really nice. I do think that for the price point, you get good quality packaging. The amount of product you get in the concealer is really nice. Sometimes concealers, for some reason, companies just put like very, very little product because you're only going to be applying it to certain areas of your face and not all over. But I feel like that's kind of not fair because there are some people who do use a lot of concealer and they use concealer as their main form of coverage product so I really do like that they gave you a good amount of product in this and I do like the packaging and just the overall selling points I like the fact that the foundation is more of a medium and demi matte finish and then you get a full coverage matte finish from the concealer I find that it gives you a more natural look you don't get that full flat cakey full coverage finish all over your face from the foundation and then go in on top of the full coverage concealer and get like a super paint like finish I like that you get kind of a mix so that it looks more natural you don't have the super heavy full coverage all over you only have it like underneath your eyes and in spots that you want it and then you can have more of a natural finish all over with the foundation so I do like that they did kind of mix it up instead of making them both full coverage and both super matte it just for me gives you a more natural look overall having them be different textures and different finishes and in addition I like the color range that they have I'm not super familiar with the full cover range obviously because I only looked at it when I was shopping in store but from what I could tell they had a decent amount of colors and I do think that you know especially in the concealers from what I could tell there was a decent amount of range there I do think you'll find your color in this range and I do like that they offered that to people because nowadays honestly foundation and concealer and base products really need to start expanding in their color range. I'm on the light end of the spectrum and sometimes I even find that I have a difficult time finding colors that match me because I have a lot of yellow in my skin but I am very fair so it's really hard for me because Although I can tan in the summer and I do tan quite easily, I tend to not go out in the sun because I'm just worried about the damage that it does to my skin and it's just more of a pain for me to go out in the sun and tan than it is for me to stay a more just like my natural everyday color with no sun. So I find that for me since I do stay pretty fair, even though I do have a lighter skin tone, I have a lot of yellow which is hard to find in the lighter spectrum because I find that a lot of foundations and base products tend to go very pink. So I do like that they do have yellow options for people who do have that type of undertone. Um, also, I will say that I love the coverage nowadays. I like having a fuller coverage and being able to sheer it out versus having a sheer coverage and then having to build it up on days that you really want to have that added coverage in certain areas. So I do like that it, they did go for that more medium full coverage aspect. The price point is really nice. They are around $10 to $12 depending on where you go. Um, the concealer and the foundation are pretty similar in price. I kind of wish the concealer was a little bit cheaper just because it's so close to the foundation. It kind of doesn't make sense to me. But then at the same time, I'm not going to knock it because they are still fairly affordable even for drugstore pricing. You know, drugstore nowadays can be like $15 to $18 for a foundation and concealer. So I'm really not upset with the price point of these being that they're only, you know, $10 to $12. I don't think that's too unreasonable to ask for, especially in drugstore nowadays. 
base. So I do really like this. I really am so surprised that I got what I really like out of the foundation and concealer. One thing I do want to quickly mention also, if you were a fan of the Maybelline Superstay, the original version, like way, way, way back before Better Skin, you know, back before they reformulated it and gave it a pump and all this kind of stuff when it was in that pore style bottle that to me is really really similar to what this is and i have not found a foundation that really matches what that old maybelline superstay formula did for my skin so if you like that formula and you were really happy and you know upset that well, if you were happy with the formula, but upset that they discontinued it, definitely check this out because I do think that it is a good dupe for that formula. And I'm really happy because the new Maybelline Superstay formula is a lot more matte and a lot more intense. So I don't think it works as well on drier skin types. So even though you may like a matte finish, it's not, you know, super dry skin friendly. This is like that matte finish that is dry skin friendly. So I do like it and I do think that it is a good dupe for that if you were upset that that was discontinued and reformulated. So definitely check these out if you are interested i definitely think they're good products to try out i hope you guys enjoyed this first impression video it's really fun for me to do first impressions because i never know which way things are going to go especially with base products base products for me i either really like them or i absolutely hate them there's no in between i'm just one of those people that i'm super finicky with my makeup products so hope you guys enjoyed this hope it was fun for you definitely thumbs this video up if you like first impression videos and tell me down below what you would like to see for first impression videos in the future. Also, let me know if you've tried this foundation and concealer and what your thoughts on it are, whether you disagree or agree with my opinion. I would really be intrigued to see what your thoughts are and why you decide you like or hate this product. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button down below so you are not missing any of my future videos. In addition, go check out my channel and scroll through some of my old videos. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you guys see any improvements or you know what type of videos you guys would like to see more of from me and I really appreciate your feedback because that's the one thing that I feel I lack on my channel and that's why I think a lot of the times even with you know things going on and you know life happening I feel like that's the one thing that kind of stops my drive for YouTube is that I'm not getting the feedback that I like and it's whether it's good or bad, negative or positive, I would really appreciate just any type of feedback that you guys can give me because I think that that's the only way that I can grow and change and I can't know what you guys would like to see if you guys don't let me know. So please let me know down below and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye everybody.